Hi, Peter Salemi. Turkey is a major strategic partner in NATO. Turkey is actually the bridge between Europe and the Middle East. Turkey has the second largest military in the NATO alliance next to the United States of America. And yet, Turkey has betrayed NATO time and time again with alliances with Russia, Iran, China, buying military equipment from Russia, doing Russia's bidding every time NATO tries to make a decision. Turkey has betrayed NATO time and time again, and biblical prophecies show that Turkey is going to betray the United States and Britain, and it's going to betray them and put these people, put the Brits and the American armies into slavery and captivity by their betrayal. Now, before I get on with some of these prophecies, I want to offer you this uh, booklet, Turkey in Bible Prophecy. We go through the uh, scriptures where it talks about Esau, Edom, and we show you that Esau, Edom are the modern day Turks today. And we'll put the links in the description below and you can get the booklet from there. Take a look at this and I'll be right back. The richest, most powerful group of nations on earth, the United States and British Commonwealth, are part of one of the most mysterious puzzles of all time. The prophecies of the Bible mention such small nations as Libya, Syria, and Ethiopia, but they seem to omit all reference to our peoples. How could such important nations be left out of inspired prophecy? This mysterious puzzle is unraveled in the full-length book, The United States and British Commonwealth in Prophecy. This book reveals the true identity of our peoples from the pages of your Bible. And yet it goes beyond past history and shows you what to expect in the future. For your free copy of the United States and British Commonwealth in Prophecy, log on to our website at britishisrael.ca for your free download. All right, get that booklet. Now, before I go on, I just want to give a special shout out to our new YouTube member. Thank you for joining the membership program for this channel, for supporting this channel. And if anybody else wants to support this channel, all you got to do is click the link below and follow the instructions and you'll pay a small membership fee, monthly membership fee. And of course, you get special privileges like shout outs, uh, badges, polls and other things. Uh, when we go live, uh, your questions go first and other privileges for joining the membership program. So do that today. All right. Esau, Edom, we find in Genesis, the 25th chapter, we see the birth of two people, two men, Esau and Jacob. And the Bible plainly says here in Genesis, the 25th chapter, verse 13, the Lord said unto her, two nations are in thy womb and two manner of people shall be separated from thy bowels. And the one people shall be stronger than the other people, and the elders shall serve the younger. So Jacob's nations are going to be greater than Esau and his nation. And then it says that when Esau came out, it says uh, the first came out uh, red all over, verse 25, like a hairy garment, and they called his name Esau. After that, came his brother out and his hand took hold on Esau's heel and his name was called Jacob. And so here we see the birth of two nations and they were struggling in her womb. As it says in verse 22, the children struggled together within her and they were struggling. And we see that struggle today between Jacob. Now, who is modern day Jacob today? Well, that is, if you read our booklet, The United States and Britain in Bible Prophecy, you will find that modern day Jacob today, Jacob had uh, his two grandsons, Ephraim and Manasseh, and he crossed his hands and put his name on them. He said, let my name be named on them. Then pronounced the birthright blessing and said that Ephraim should become a great company, a commonwealth of many nations, and Manasseh was to emerge as a great single powerful nation. And we identified these two peoples as the British and American peoples, and they are greater than Esau Edom, who is today modern day Turkey. And we prove that to you in that booklet, Turkey in Bible Prophecy. So it says, The elder shall serve the younger, and that's absolutely true today. It happened in World War I, and it's happening today in the NATO alliance. And then it says here in verse 27 
of Genesis, the 25th chapter. It says, the boys grew, Esau was a cunning hunter, a man of the field, and Jacob was a plain man. Now, why the King James translators chose plain man, I don't know why, but it should read that Jacob was an upright man. And it's the same word used for Job in Job, the first chapter, verse 1. And let me just go there right quickly to the book of Job. Job 1, 1. Notice what it says here about Job. It says, there was a man in the land of Uz whose name was Job, and that man was perfect and upright. That's the same Hebrew word describing Jacob. One that feared God and eschewed evil. So he hated sin, feared God. It's the same word used for Jacob, but it says here he was a plain man. It should read upright, perfect, just like Job. He feared God and hated evil. That's what it should read. And then it talks about here about how Isaac loved Esau, but Rebekah loved Jacob. Then Jacob told Esau, he said, sell me this day, verse 31, thy birthright. And Esau said, behold, I am at the point to die. What profit shall this birthright do to me? Now, why did he say something like that? Well, because he did not obey God. And he looked at the temporary things, and he didn't look at the future the way Jacob did. Jacob saw God's overall plan because he feared God and hated evil, but Jacob, he didn't fear God. Notice what it says here in verse 34. It says, thus Jacob, uh, Esau rather, despised his birthright. Now, what does that mean? Well, the birthright consists of two things. First, the double, he gets double the blessing, the material blessings, and of course, he's not going to despise that. But there is a second component to the birthright. You become the spiritual leader of your family. You are responsible for their spirituality. And that's what he despised. He didn't fear God. He didn't hate sin, but Jacob did. And this is why he said, What's, I'm at the point to die. What profit is this birthright to me? He didn't fear God. He knew that he was going to die. He looked at the temporary things. He knew that he was a sinner and he didn't want to repent. He wanted to continue his lifestyle. So what profit is this birthright to me? And then Jacob said, swear me this day. And he swear unto him and he sold his birthright to Jacob. So he sold it to Jacob. It was Jacob's. He bought it off of him. Then Jacob gave uh, Esau bread, pottage of lentils, and he did eat and drink, rose up, went his way, thus despised his birthright. He didn't fear God. He didn't hate sin the way Jacob did. And so Jacob went away and he didn't repent. He didn't look at the the overall picture, the way Jacob did, as it says in Hebrews, the 11th chapter, verse 13, where he knew he was, strange, he was a stranger and pilgrim on the earth, and that he knew that God was going to come and establish the kingdom of God and salvation for him and his family and for all of mankind. Jacob didn't see that, so he despised his birthright. All right, now we get to the prophecy of Genesis the 26th chapter where here we see the birthright getting passed on in Genesis the 27th chapter rather the birthright gets passed on Isaac passes the birthright to Jacob and he says this in verse 28 of Genesis 27 it says therefore God give thee of the dew of heaven the fatness of the earth plenty of corn and wine let the people serve you nations bow down to you be Lord over thy brethren and let thy mother's son bow down to thee. Cursed be every one that curses you, and blessed be he that blesseth thee. He gave this to Jacob, and isn't that true today? Where nations, nations shall bow down, shall serve you and bow down to you, Lord over thy brethren, who is the top European nation on the earth, the British Empire, the American Empire. And it says, curse be everyone that curse you, and blessed be everyone that blesses you. And isn't that true today? When we got sanctions on nations that curse the West and so on, they slap uh, sanctions on Russia, Iran, other people. And when they curse the West, well, then they are cursed. And isn't that true? 
when you look at the nations today and how they deal with the nations of the West. And then it says, God give thee the dew of heaven and the fatness of the earth, plenty of corn and wine. Rich nations is describing the Western nations of Canada. Canada, Britain, the United States, Australia, New Zealand, and so on. So here, the United States and Britain have received their birthright. The, these prophecies are for the end time. Then we get to the prophecy of Esau in this end time. Now notice what it says here. It says, Isaac, his father, verse 39 of Genesis 27, answered and said unto him, Behold, thy dwelling shall be the fatness of the earth. Now, it shouldn't read that way. When you look at Barnes notes, when you look at Barnes notes, it should read away from the fatness of the earth. Behold, thy dwelling shall be away from the fatness of the earth and the dew of heaven above. He's saying that Esau is going to be away from the blessings of Jacob. And when you look at the nation of Turkey, it doesn't have any of the blessings of Jacob, of plenty of corn, wine, fatness of the earth. Absolutely not. It's basically a barren wilderness. So it says, Behold, thy dwelling shall be away from the fatness of the earth and the dew of heaven from above. Now notice it says, But by thy sword shalt thou live. So Jacob, or Esau rather, is going to get his blessings by war and conquest and when you look at when you look into history when you look at the hordes the turkish hordes and all their conquests of central asia and southern europe and so on they made their living by warfare it says thy thy sword shall by the sword you shall live and thou shalt serve thy brother and it shall come to pass when thou shalt have the dominion this is the Turkish Empire, the Ottoman Empire. Thou shalt break his yoke from off your neck. And it's speaking of, of course, the Crusades, when the Ottoman Empire controlled the Middle East, the Crusades came in and uh, controlled especially Palestine and Lebanon. And at that time, they were under the yoke of the Crusades. But it says, you will break, thou shalt break his yoke from off your neck when you have the dominion and that's exactly what happened during the time of the crusades so these are the prophecies of esau now when i come back i'll show you what happened to esau in history and then i'll show you a bible prophecy about this end time and how turkey is going to betray jacob the mighty roman empire had everything plenty of leisure time their own new morality. <laughs> Enormous military might. The religion of their choice. Political freedom. What went wrong? Read The Modern Romans, a 93-page lesson of history ignored. The Modern Romans asks, can we afford the grandeur of Rome? All right, get that booklet, Turkey and Prophecy. Now, before I go on, don't forget to join our YouTube membership program. You get special privileges when you join. The link is in the description below. You get shout outs like what we're doing uh, right now, badges, opinion polls, uh, special Q&A. When we go live, you go to the top of the chat and your questions go first before anybody else's. You get all these special privileges by just signing up and just paying a small uh, membership fee per month. And of course, the link is in the description below and you get all the details there. So don't forget to join our YouTube membership program. All right, what happened to Esau Edom? Well, when we look, first of all, what did they look like? We see that Esau married into the Hittite Empire, and you can read this in Genesis, the 26th chapter, verse 34. Now, the Hittites, when you look at the Jewish Encyclopedia, their article under the Hittites, you find that the Hittites were mongoloid, as it says in type, when you look at the Egyptian monuments. And when you look at a portrait of some of the early sultans of the Turkish Empire, you find that the early Turks had Mon Mongolian facial features and they also had blonde hair 
and pale blue eyes. So here we see both features of Isaac and Esau with the Hittites together, and you see that with in the Turkish uh, features that you find on many of these paintings of some of the sultans of the of the Ottoman Empire. All right, now you also find in the Bible the land of the Tamani in Genesis uh, 36, 34, and Timon was a major tribe of Esau. And we find that the Tamani, and you see in the book of Obadiah, it says, O Timon. And that's where we get the word Ottoman from. The Tamani, when you look at history, after King Nebuchadnezzar took all these people captive, we look into history, you will find that the, the Tamani ended up in Central Asia. As it says here, from uh, his book, Early Kings of Persia by Shea, volume five, it says the land of Timani ended up in Turkestan and Central Asia. The Rocky Plateau was called the land of the Timani. We also find a city, the city of Iraq called uh, Basra, possibly a slight variation of the biblical Edomite city, Bozra, that you find in Genesis 36, 33. Now Stra Strabo names these people the Odomantis, and the Edoni, the Odomantis, is, of course, the Tamani in Central Asia. Now, Peter Delev, in his article, The Edenonians, says that the Odomantis and the Edoni, which is obviously Edom, share a common ancestry and therefore related. The ruling family of the Osmanli Turks was the Ottomans who descended from the Odomantis, Ottoman is the English derivation of the word Osman. Osman comes from the Turkish word Osman, which is derived from the Turkish name Othman. Othman was the founder of the Ottoman dynasty. And of course, Obadiah 9 says, O Timon, or the Ottoman Empire. Now, in the book of... So the Edom ended up in Central Asia, and they are, of course, the Turks today. Now, in the book of Obadiah, we see a prophecy of this end time. In verse 10, it talks about, Thy violence against thy brother Jacob, shame shall cover you, and thou shalt be cut off forever. It says, In the day that thou stood on the other side, he, Turkey stood with Jacob's enemies and I mean isn't that kind of reminiscent of what we see today of Turkey standing with Jacob's enemies aligning with Russia and Iran and China we see that today you stood on the other side in the day that the strangers carried away captive his forces and foreigners entered into his gates and cast lots upon Jerusalem even thou was one of them. So here we see Jacob in Jerusalem. As we said in uh, Daniel, the 11th chapter, verse 45, we see the king of the north, which we have identified as NATO, and who heads NATO, Jacob, the United States, and Britain. And they are going to occupy Israel. They're going to stay there. J uh, NATO's going to break apart. When it breaks apart, the United States and Britain stay and continue to occupy Jerusalem. It says, you stood on the other side, you were as one of them. Verse 11, verse 12, it says, But thou should not have looked on the day of thy brother, in the day that, thou, that he became a stranger. Neither should thou have rejoiced over the children of Judah. So here we see the Jews in Jerusalem as well. In the day of their destruction, that hasn't happened yet. It's talking about the great tribulation that's coming upon Israel and Judah. Uh, Jeremiah the 30th chapter verse 5 and 7 it is called the great tribulation in the day of their destruction neither should thou have spoken proudly in the day of distress can you see the Turks doing this when you look at the Turks today they despise the Jews they side with the Palestinians I mean this is perfectly describing the Turks today verse 13 thou should have not entered into the gate of my people describing the Bosporus and the Dardanelles. In the day of their calamity, that's the great tribulation. Yea, thou stood not, thou shouldest not have looked on their affliction. Again, that's the great tribulation. Jeremiah 30, 30, verse 14 and 15. In the day of their calamity, nor hast thou laid 
laid hands on their stubs, substance in the day of their calamity. Neither should thou have stood on in the crossway. This is obviously talking about the Bosporus and Dardanelles. To cut off those of his that did escape. So here we see many of the American and British troops escaping. And the Turks are coming in and stopping them from escaping. To cut off those of his that did escape, neither should thou have delivered up those of his that did remain in the day of distress. So they're going to capture these soldiers, soldiers and deliver them up to the beast of prophecy. And of course, Turkey is going to be part of that beast because it says, even you were as one of them. So here we see a great betrayal. Turkey is going to betray Jacob, the United States and Britain. We're seeing a little bit of that today, but in the great tribulation, Turkey is going to stand with the beast and uh, bring up many and take many of the American and British soldiers and, and, and deliver them up to the beast and they're going to be put into slavery and captivity. Turkey is a very strategic area. Again, it's a crossway. It's the bridge between Europe and the Middle East and they're going to use that to deliver up many of the American and British soldiers to the beast of prophecy which is going to be led by Germany. So a great betrayal is going to take place Turkey is going to betray the United States and Britain. Well, life's been pretty good. Summer home, yacht, vacation when I wanted. <laughs> Some little kids sure spent a lot of time with that. Too bad they never last. Yeah, a lot of things are like that. Kids are grown now, and hmm, Sandy and I aren't getting any younger. Hmm, is this all there is? You can know the answer to this age-old question. What is the purpose of human life? Download your free copy at BritishIsrael.ca. All right, so what's going to happen to Esau Edom in the kingdom of God? Again, Esau, remember, despised his birthright. He despised Jacob, and we see that in the biblical prophecies. So what's going to happen to Esau, Edom, in the kingdom of God? Notice Obadiah, the 17th verse. It says, Upon Mount Zion shall be deliverance, and there shall be holiness, and the house of Jacob shall possess their possessions. Talking about Esau, parts, remnants of the Turkish Empire are still there. They call themselves the Palestinians today that dwell in East Jerusalem. It says, The house of Jacob shall... Uh, possess their possessions. Verse 18, it says, The house of Jacob shall be a fire, and the house of Joseph a flame, and the house of Esau for stubble. And they shall kindle in them and devour them, that there shall be, that there shall not be any remaining of the house of Esau, for the eternal has spoken it. The nation of Esau in the kingdom of God is going to cease to exist and all there's going to be is stubble. Just individuals of Esau are going to remain, but not a nation of Esau. And these uh, individuals are going to be under the yoke of the house of Jacob. Get this booklet, Turkey and Prophecy, and we go through with you all the scriptures in great detail to show you in great detail what's going to happen to the Turks in the very near future. Don't forget to like and subscribe to this YouTube channel and don't forget to join our uh, YouTube membership program and I'll see you here next time on the Watchman Program.